Hi, good evening and welcome to tonight's Table Talk. Um, Today's discussion um, is all about student accommodations at Wichita State University. Um, as you know, my name is Alicia Newell and I have the privilege of serving as uh, the Assistant Vice President for Student Affairs. And with me tonight is my colleague and friend, Jennifer Nichols, um, with our Office of Disability Services. And so um, we'll introduce ourselves and then I'll let Jennifer um, take it over. Um, and so I have been with the university for about 17 years, I'm proud first generation student, um, an alum as well. And so have a true affinity and passion for everything Wichita State. And I think the thing that excites me most about continuing to work um, at the university is just getting to work with students um, on a daily basis. And that really just kind of drives um, everything that I do and making sure that we help them and connect them um, with resources and services so that they can be successful. Um, and so with me is Jennifer, who's one of the amazing individuals on campus who does that. And so I'll let Jennifer introduce herself and then we'll jump into our session today. Hi, my name is Jennifer Nicholson and I'm the Assistant Director over at the Office of Disability Services. Um, I have been with the university for almost seven years now um, in various capacities in my office. Um, and my background is completely in education. And so I, I do this um, because this is what I love to do. I love working with our students, um, helping our students succeed in any way we can. And so, yeah, that's why I'm here tonight. All right. And so as we um, go through this evening, Jennifer, Jennifer is going to talk to us a little bit about um, what um, types of services and programs um, that her office provides. And if you've not joined us before on a Shocker Family Table Talk, um, if you have any questions at all or comments or concerns, feel free to put them in the chat. And then as we go through um, today's program, we will um, answer them the best that we can. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Jennifer so that she can share information um, about how her office um, helps support your students. Take it away, Jennifer. All right. So one of the big things um, that we get questions about is what can we do? Um, I get questions about students with that had IEPs in high school, a 504 plan. They already currently work with a counselor or a therapist um, or their doctor. They've got a medical disability. They've got mobility issues, things like that. So we get lots of questions, but the big one is always, what can we do? How can we help? Um, and so whenever I meet with a student, that's the first thing I ask, how can I help? Um, in our office, we have uh, three staff members, including myself, that work directly with students um, on a day-to-day -day basis. And our main goal is to level the playing field. Um, not so much, we're not trying to make things easy. We're not trying to, you know, there's a misconception sometimes that, oh, you have accommodations, so it must be easier for you. No, not at all. We're just trying to make things equal access. Um, and so some of the things that our office can do to help is we have a, a lot, a lot of accommodations. Um, and we have accommodations that we don't even know about yet because we work with students and try to meet them where they're at. So for example, if I'm working with a student who had an IEP in high school, a lot of times I will take that IEP and go, okay, what are you used to using? You are used to having a note taker, extended time on tests, things like that. And we're gonna to try to meet that student where they're at. So the process for our office um, is, and you'll see this throughout our time here, is all you have to do is reach out to our office by emailing us and letting us know that you are interested in, there it is, um, disability services and, and receiving accommodations. And what we will do is we will receive your email and one of the three of us who are intake specialists um, and myself will contact you and give you a questionnaire. We'll start getting documentation from you, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, and we'll get all your accommodations set up. Now with that in mind, 
accommodations are fluid. So what I mean by that is that we're going to work with you and set up accommodations from the beginning. But if something's not working, we're going to work with you and find something that does. So the accommodations can change um, throughout a semester over time as you're here at WSU. It, we can change them anytime. So documentation. Let's talk about that real quick. I've already mentioned IEPs and 504 plans. If you don't know what those are, those are usually given to students um, K through 12. And it's a legal document that K through 12 uses um, to set up accommodation plans for students. Um, if you don't have one of those, that's okay. But those are really good documentation because they really help our office and our staff know exactly what we can do to help and what's worked in the past. Because most times students are involved in making those plans. So we know what's there, we know how to help you. Um, we really like to use those to, as, a, as a starting point um, for college. So IEPs and 504 plans, those count as documentation. All other documentation, um, excuse me, just needs to be from a doctor, a counselor, a therapist, some a licensed professional, okay? Um, I get a lot of times where students will say, can I just bring in my prescription? No, don't bring me your prescription. Um, just if you have a prescription, let's say for um, anxiety and depression, all you have to do is contact your doctor or whomever it is that prescribed that to you and ask them to write you a letter so that you can bring that in. And that will count as documentation. Now, if you don't have documentation right now, that's okay. We're gonna work with you for an entire semester, working with accommodations, things like that, and helping you find resources to get that documentation. So there's documentation. Um, once we've set up everything, as far as accommodations go, we're going to keep checking in with you. So most of our freshmen, if you're coming in as a, as a, as a freshman, we're going to be meeting with you a weekly basis if you needed, a bi-weekly basis, once a month, whatever it is that you think you need, that's what we're going to do. Okay. Um, so we're not just going to set up accommodations and say, good luck. We're going to keep checking in with you, make sure that the accommodations that we've set up are working, that things are going well, um, that communication is working between you and your faculty members. We're going to do all those things to help you. On the note of faculty, once we set up accommodations, our office will take then and send letters to your faculty members. So, and there's a lot of misconceptions about our office too, as far as, well, then everybody's going to know that I'm different. And even though we're sending stuff to your faculty members, all they know is that you need accommodations. So they don't know why you need those accommodations. They don't know what's going on. Um, working with our office doesn't go on anything. There's nothing on your transcript. There's nothing, there's nothing anywhere that says, oh, you worked with ODS, so that must have made it easier for you. There's, there's nothing like that. Um, so, and we can, we can talk more about that later if anybody has any questions about that. But once we send the letters out to your faculty members, then faculty will receive the letters, and if they have any questions, they direct them back to us. So there's, at the beginning, there's a lot of back and forth between us and the faculty members as far as how can we make this accommodation work? What do we need to do? That kind of thing. So let's talk about accommodations because there's a lot of them. Um, and like I said before, we're going to try to meet you where you're at. But some of the big accommodations that we do a lot of times, we have a really great um, testing center on campus, testing services. And all of our students who need testing accommodations can go to the testing center and get those accommodations met. Now, one of the great things about the testing center is, is that they have private testing environments up there. They're proctored by video camera, so you don't have somebody sitting right there with you, um, talking, you know, making comments, tapping on their computer. It's just you. Um, and then the other thing is, is that 
faculty send your exams straight to the testing center. So you'll just schedule your test, you show up, bring your ID, go in, take your test, and then you're done. So one of the accommodations we do for testing is a private testing environment. The other big one that we do is extended test time. Here at WSU, our extended test time is double time. So if the class gets an hour, you would get two hours to take the exam. One of the other big accommodations that we do um, has a lot to do with note taking. And we're lucky um, here at WSU because we got the opportunity to get smart pins, Echo smart pins, and they have been uh, fantastic. They're a pin, an actual writing pin, but it records what you write and the audio going on at the same time. And we tested these out in some of our big lecture halls and sat in the back in full lecture hall um, and it recorded everything the instructor said. And the great thing about those is, is that we teach you how to use them. We give you everything you need for them. We're here if anything goes wrong with the pen. It's just been an, an amazing help. And we even have students that have graduated that now have bought their own and use it for meetings. They use it for um, when they're doing tasks at work, things like that. So this has become one of those technologies that can you could potentially utilize outside of here. So some of the other classroom accommodations that we provide um, really revolve around what the student needs. So it could be um, an accessible desk in their classes. It could be um, the ability to bring food and drink in because they are diabetic. Um, and you wouldn't think that would be a big deal, but sometimes when you're in labs and things like that, you can't bring food and drink in. And so we have to work with the faculty to, to make sure that you can have that. Um, if anybody has any specific questions on that one, type it in the comments and we can go into more detail. Um, some of the other accommodations that we do revolve around housing. Um, if anybody has a, an accommodation that they need for housing, like um, an emotional support animal, that all goes through our office. Um, if there's a need for a private room in housing, that also goes through our office. Um, we do have to have um, specific documentation for those two things. So just keep that in mind as well. Um, some of the other outside accommodations that we do is we help with students who have any kind of like food allergies, um, gluten allergies, things like that. We work really closely with dining services um, to make sure that students are able to meet with people to get an idea of what they can eat in the Shocker Dining Hall, what is safe, what's good, you know, things like that. Um, we will also, if you have, let's say, a peanut allergy, we'll go around to all of your classes and post that on the classes that that's not allowed. Um, so those are some of the outside things that we do. Um, once the semester gets going, like I said, we'll meet with you, check in with you, make sure that everything's going good. Um, and then at the end of each semester, we send out this huge email to everybody. So you'll get an email that says, hey, make sure you let us know um, if you need accommodations for next semester. And we have a link that we'll set up and we send it to you and we say, we need you to fill this out as soon as you can. You'll go into our platform and literally just go, I need accommodations for this class, this one, and this one. Here's the ones that I need. Because you could, there can be classes that you're like, you know what, I really don't need testing accommodations for my ceramics class. Maybe it's all project based. And so you don't, we don't have to send that to your instructor. We could just send, I need to be able to leave for restroom breaks or whatever that may be. Um, so that's all you have to do. Once you've turned in your documentation to our office, you don't have to keep doing it. You don't have to keep updating it. All you have to do is let us know. Um, the only time that, and I'm just gonna throw this out here so that it's kind of in the back of your head. The only time that you're going to want to get updated documentation is if you're going on to, let's say, 
the nursing program. Because once you go to take your state boards for nursing, they're going to require you to have updated documentation within like, I think it's the last two years. And the nursing program is that way. Um, dental hygiene is that way. PA, PT, um, a lot of our medical fields. So anytime that you have a question about stuff like that, we'll, we'll be more than happy to help you as we go. Okay. Um, I'm looking at the So one of the um, questions in there is, can we get info on the smart pins that we use? So the Echo smart pins, that's, that's what they're called. You can actually Google them. Um, they're, they're on Amazon as well um, and things like that. But if you're interested in one and that would be um, something that you think would be useful to you, all you have to do is contact our office at that disability.services at wichita.eu and we can dive into that one. For sure. And one of the things that I really love about the assistive technology that your office offers, Jennifer, is that it allows students to kind of test drive something new mm -hmm. that maybe they never even knew existed before. And before families go out and purchase it on their own, they can see, does this technology really meet my students' need? Yeah. Uh, because I think those smart pins are they're not too fairly expensive, but they are. They run around like 150, yeah. um, you know, per pen. Um, but it's nice because it's something free that the university offers to our mm -hmm. students. Um, and then really, I, I love the idea behind of setting students up for success. And so how you talked about students who utilize the smart pens in class and are now utilizing them in their jobs because we're teaching them how they can be successful, not only mm -hmm. in the classroom, but beyond when they're out there in workforce and um, just using that in their everyday jobs to be successful. And so um, there's a lot of different assistive technologies that um, disability services can offer. That's just one example. And so by having your students really, you know, have those one-on-ones with um, the specialists you know, whether it's, you know, bi-weekly, every month, every other month, um, just those check-ins is like, is this working? Is it not working? Um, I remember um, sitting and uh, meeting with a student who had um, dyslexia and uh, they were just like, everything's all over the page. And then our director, I was just in there casually with the director for a meeting and the student came in. So I'm just kind of sitting back and she, busted out this little thing and was like, here, try this and try reading with it. And like all of a sudden, everything on the page just came together into this little trapezoid thing that she had. <laughs> and I was like, wow. Yeah. It wasn't even like that huge of a technology enhancer, but it's exactly what the student needed at that time in order for them to feel like, man, I can do this. Yep. This helps me a lot. And so. And stuff like that, you can literally buy at Dollar Tree. Yeah. Which is great. I did notice, um, Alicia, in some of the questions, um, we, we work with everybody on campus, all majors. There's no, um, we work with graduate students, undergraduate students, you name it. We work with everybody. Um, and then there was another one on here that talked about, did junior transferring in get the same attention? Absolutely. Um, I have students who are juniors and seniors that I've been meeting with weekly since they were freshmen. So um, there's no there's no time limit on it. Um, and a lot of times what we do as um, in my office is we go with what the student wants to do. If it's if it's helping for you and me to sit down and go, OK, what's do this week? What do we need to do? What's going on? We're going to do that. So it's not that's what we're here for. The other thing that we're here for is resources. So we're here to connect you with the right people because we have some really, really awesome things on campus from our Geeks Tutoring Lab for engineering students to our math lab, our writing center, our student success coaches, our SI set. We have so many things that it, what's nice about my job is I get to say, okay, I hear you and I hear where you're struggling. Have you tried this? We can still meet and we can still talk and do all this stuff, but 
let's look at this too, because this could be something that can be really beneficial for you. And I've got students that work with three or four different people on campus and are making it work. So between us and I mean, that's, that's what we do in student affairs is we're just one big resource. Um, I feel like some days. So and I think that's something, you know, when we talk about having um, an orientation, Kim and I talk a lot about having a coordinated care unit where the right hand knows what the left hand's doing. And so if someone's meeting with their academic success coach, as well as someone maybe with the care team and disability services, we're going to talk to each other and making sure, hey, this student just met with me. Can you follow up with them on something that maybe is more related to just their area? Um, so that because I we don't want to do something because we're not the experts in what Jennifer's office does and vice versa. Mm -hmm. And so um, I really think that Wichita State does a phenomenal job, um, just like uh, Moonbi had shared, of really just trying to make sure that we're meeting students' needs. Um, we meet them where they're at. And so, you know, Jennifer said it could be we meet with them one and done, or it could be uh, once a week, once a month, whatever that, that looks like for the student. Um, and really, it's just being that accountability partner and supporter and cheerleader and making sure that we get them what they need. Um, and looking at some of the other questions, Jennifer, um, when do you suggest? And so this is kind of a great question <laughs> on when right when now. You start, right. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, one uh, of the good things, start. Alicia, right now is that during the summertime, we still work with students. We're here all year round. Um, we have students that are taking summer classes, but our caseload is significantly lower during the summertime, which is great for incoming students, transferring or, or freshmen, because it gives us a chance to really get things set up, meet with you, get stuff going and get it going before the semester starts. Because the, I can't stress that enough because there's nothing worse than students coming to us at midterms because they just had a really bad test with midterms and now everything is falling down when we could have been doing something about it from the beginning. So if you if your student is even remotely thinking about that they may need accommodations, there is nothing harmful in sending us an email saying, hey, can we meet? Because we can talk about things and it may be something else that your, your student needs on campus. And we can say, hey, here, you need to go here. But if it is something that we can help with, then it's so much easier to get things set up before your student even gets here. Yeah, I think, um, you know, the earlier, the better. Um, and that way they just have the connection. Also, if your student's going to move into the resident halls, um, you know, before they move in, make sure that they're reaching out and connecting. And then once they are on campus, have them stop by and meet their person. Uh, because, you know, our hope is that, you know, your their specialist in um, ODS is going to be their cheerleader, their advocate um, until they cross the stage. Um, and so make sure that they're there to build that relationship and just say, hey, I want to stop in and introduce myself and say hi. I know they're planning a open house in the fall sometime. And so your students should check their email for that because that would be a great time just to kind of stop in and meet with their team as well. Um, uh, Moonbi, I just want to say thank you for your compliment. I'm so happy that your baby graduated. That's what it's all about. Um, and just sharing their success is our success. And so um, definitely making sure that, you know, we do that and provide the best that we can to the rest of um, the students coming in. Um, and so one of the questions um, that came in from Paul is, um, increased issues with mental health concerns and accommodations. And this is very real, Paul. Um, yeah. You know, with especially with COVID-19 happening, so many of our students, you know, just the heightened awareness of isolation alone um, has brought out so many more concerns for mental health. And so is that something you guys have been seeing, Jennifer? Yeah. Um, and then, you know, what kind of accommodations are, you know, students who may be experiencing anxiety or severe depression? What, mm -hmm. kind, what types of things do you guys do for them? So we have, we've seen a, a total increase in our students in the, in the area of mental health. And I, I noticed that the, the last part of his question, you know, 
I feel awkward about being concerned about this. My student may or may not ask for help. Um, one of the awesome things that I've noticed over the last couple of years about WSU is that our faculty and staff are really awesome about saying, hey, have you thought about going over and getting some extra help? Um, and I've noticed that if enough people say that, then usually students are like, okay, maybe I should go um, and get that help. So one of the things that's great here, like I said, is that we've got a really good backing and people know um, who can help. So some of the things that we started really diving into is what is the barriers? What is, what are the barriers? Um, and for some students, it was test anxiety. For some students, it was that feeling of being overwhelmed. They've got 17 projects going on um, and really talking to them about, okay, how bad is it to go an extra semester? Instead of taking 18 hours, you know, or six classes, what would it hurt you to take one more semester, you know, and really trying to get students to understand that hey, sometimes it's really okay. We have a lot of STEM programs here and are they are rigorous. Um, not that other programs aren't either, but we have some pretty hefty, um, if your child's going into engineering or any of those type of things, they're taking a lot of hours and they're not easy classes. Um, and we see a lot of students that get to, like I said before, midterms, things like that, where stuff's just not going right. Um, and so we're a lot of times it's finding out where the barriers are and then checking in on those students constantly. Keep going, checking in with them, making sure they have the resources um, available to them, whether that's our counseling and prevention services people, um, our care team, our student success coaches, all of those things, making sure that, you know, they're working with the people that are there. So a lot of times I noticed, and Alicia, you might be able to, to chime in on this one, but a lot of times with some of our students with mental health, um, literally just having somebody saying, hey, go over and talk to them. It's really not a big deal. Um, and on top of that, Alicia and I have both met with students that don't realize that things like anxiety, depression, stuff like that are a disability. So yeah, we've had a lot. Yeah, th I think that's right on. And a lot of times when care cases come in and it's students who are suffering with severe depression or anxiety, they have no idea that they qualify for disability services. And so when we talk to them about, you know, those days when you can't get out of bed, the days when, you know, your anxiety is so um, elevated that you just freeze and you can't mm -hmm. get to class. You know, these are th these are some of the things that this office can help you with. And so really, it's just a, a big part on our part and yours as the parent of helping to educate them on what the resources can be, because, you know, I think of mental health, you know, today, we don't have as big of a stigma as we did, I would say, five to 10 years ago. Um, we have more help-seeking behavior, which is great. The prevention work that we've done at Wichita State is um, top-notch. Um, being able to connect and get students where they need to be, um, I would say, is probably one of our specialties. Um, and so it's, hey, have you tried this? Hey, let me walk you over so we can talk to my friend Jennifer, who's going to let us know what they can do for you. And yeah. because they trust me or because they trust whomever's office that they're in and we're taking them and we're doing a personal handoff or a personal connection with it, with another office um, really goes a long way. And so um, mm -hmm. and one of the things that I will add, Paul, is that if it doesn't work, the student has to tell us that's the other part. Because um, in every classroom this fall, we will have posters that will be put up that says it's okay to not be okay, but it's not okay to stay that way. Yeah. Um, and it's talking about where to go for resources, how to seek help. And so even as a parent yourself, if you see that your student's not okay, you can submit a care report that will come to myself and my team. And then when we meet with the student, we may say, hey, Let's go and check in with Miss Jennifer to see what they can do to help you. Um, and, and that so goes, Alicia, with anything. If 
something's not working, especially if they're already working with our office, if an accommodation's not working, if a faculty member is not helping them out in the way they should, if something's not right, they have to speak up. Yes. Um, and that's something as a parent, you can, you know, be kind of on them about because a lot of times they're like, well, they kind of did my accommodation. I'm like, no, either they did it or they didn't, A or B. And then I can't do anything about it unless I know because I'm not in their classes. So that goes for, for just about everything on campus. <laughs> if we don't yeah. know, we can't help. <laughs> Ron, my friend. Oh, I feel like it was like whew, yesterday that you moved your baby into campus from Dallas. And so um, Ron asked a question. He has two daughters um, here with us at Wichita State. Um, and one of them is getting ready to graduate this year. She's in her senior year. Um, she has dyslexia. And so is there anything specific maybe that he can do to help her in her senior year um just you know anything different from the normal senior year oh gosh it is a roller coaster this is where the last unexpected loop comes in ron and so if you remember me talking about the roller coaster ride at orientation this is that last unexpected loop and the drop that we did not prepare for because when students enter senior year, especially when we move past into second semester, we have students who start to check out. They get senioritis really bad and then they just stop answering Jennifer when she's reaching out to check in to see how things are going. But really it's also fear of transition. And so if your students are already dealing with, um, you know, certain needs that that needs to get met, but then you add on the anxiety of student transition. What's next in my life? What does that job look like? And so um, anything else you want to talk about, Jennifer, for seniors? So one of the things that um, we do a lot of in our office is getting people connected with the right people. So that also includes career services. We work really closely with um, a couple of people over in career services that help students with resumes and job application stuff. They help them with so many things. And I know that, you know, they career accelerator and stuff, they present uh, almost all of our orientations and stuff, but they are no joke. Like it is, it is a big deal. Um, and Jill Fletcher over there has been amazing working with our students. Um, she literally, will sit down, hang out with you, do mock interview questions, help you with what to wear for certain jobs, things like that. So that we're still going to be here. Um, and the other thing that we do, especially with our juniors and seniors is how to self advocate. Because one of the biggest things that a lot of students don't realize going into this, and this kind of goes along with your question about a checklist is what do I need to do? What, what is going on? what's what's happening um and our office does a lot of checklists a lot um so even down to when do i order my stuff for graduation when do i sign up to say i'm walking when do i do all of those things so we we definitely do that as well um when i say our plans are individualized they are very individualized Truly. Yeah, yeah. There, there's no two students that are alike. And no, so, no. Um, but I will say, you know, the major things that your students should be doing their senior year is filing their application for degree. Mm -hmm. um, that is a big one because without that, we have no idea that they're planning to graduate. Um, so really at this point, they should be working very closely with their academic advisor of saying, hey, am I really good to go? Once they sign that baby, bring it's time to order regalia. Let's get hype and start the countdown. Without that, there should be no countdown. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Don't let anybody count down without right. that. Um, and but we're we going to all... send them a lot of times to their advisor. There's a lot of times where we are going to say, okay, this is where the self-advocating comes in. Have you met with your advisor? Regardless of what major they're in, department, nothing, it doesn't matter because they have to do that in order to graduate. And so we're going to ask that a whole lot of times, um, especially if 
they're working with our office. We're going to work with them on, because that's, it's huge. Advocating for yourself is hard and it's huge. And so starting from freshman year or junior year, if you're transferring in, we're going to be pushing you to do that piece. And I'm going to ask your student a million times, have you talked to your instructor? Have you emailed your instructor? No. Okay. Let's draft an email. We're going to start doing those things because I'm not in the class or I'm not the one getting the job. I already have a job. I don't need another one. Um, so those are the kind of things that we're going to be working with your student on is self advocating. And then the other piece of that is understanding when to disclose things. When you get a job, we're going to work with them during internships and stuff like that. So it's like, what do you need? Okay. Obviously you don't need extended test time anymore because you're not taking any tests. So how does that translate into a job? What do you need? Um, and a lot of times people are like, well, I don't have, you know, mobility issues. I don't need a special desk or anything like that. But if you're dyslexic, that's, it doesn't just go away once you're done with school. That's, that's going to keep going. So maybe you do need a handful of the little things from Dollar Tree that you can use when you're reading a report or doing things like that. So that's all stuff that we do on a regular basis. Yeah, I think one of the things that I appreciate most is really that advocating and navigating, navigating and advocating piece, because it really shows that's where I see the most growth from our students mm -hmm. is when they come in as a first year student or a transfer student, and then they are really coached into how, how do I do this? And it, they just kind of come full circle. Um, I know another, um, Susan had asked a question about tutoring um, and getting classes started. Um, that continues to be an issue, I think just campus-wide really, and looking for tutors. Um, our Office of Disability Services works hand in hand with our TRIO Disability Support Service Program on campus mm -hmm. um, and trying to get students connected with their service for academic tutoring. Um, and if they're not able to find a tutor in their program, then they connect them with um, our Office of Student Success. So do you wanna talk a little bit about that process, yeah. Jen? So a lot, um, most students that if they qualify um, for disability services, then they would qualify for TRIO Disability Support Services, which is a grant funded program. And they do a lot of one-on-one -on -one tutoring um, and other help that's, we always tell people that our office is in the classroom, TRIO is everything outside the classroom. So tutoring and, and support, um, working on computers, things like that. Um, so that's kind of where the, the difference is. But the great part about our student success office and our Shocker Learning Center, so this, the Shocker Learning Center um, is actually where a lot of the mainstream tutors come from. Um, they also do our uh, SI sessions, our student instructions. Um, and so students can log into their MyWSU portal on our webpage um, and they can request a tutor on their page. Um, now, I'm going to tell you right now that that's literally not going to start until fall starts. So they they can start requesting them anytime. But because we're still in summer classes, the Shocker Learning Center is still providing tutors for students who are taking summer classes. So a lot of them aren't going to start until right when you get, um, when they start in the fall. But if they have questions or they can't figure out how to do it, they can come by our office anytime and we can sit down and show them how to do it. It's really easy and you can request it for just about any class. Um, our engineering students from freshman year on can go over to Geeks. Um, they are phenomenal. Um, and they work with every engineering class you can think of, including all the way down to your Calc 1 classes. Um, they have a whole bunch of math ones that they cover. Chemistry, they cover that one. Um, all of the things that you would need for engineering. So that's great. And then our math lab opens up as soon as school starts. Our writing lab opens up as soon as school starts. Um, I mean, they're open right now, but that is they're available as soon as we start. So um, for that one, Susan, if, if, you're, if your student has any questions, all they have to do is ask. 
and we can connect them with whomever they need <laughs> to get started with. And I would also share, Susan, is that if they're like if it's a math class, for example, that your student needs a tutor for, um, we're gonna first push them to that supplemental instruction. If they're an engineering student, we're gonna push them to Geeks or to um, the math lab on campus. But if they do need more just one-on-one -on -one because that is not a, an environment that's conducive to their learning, then um, have them put in a request for his tutor the first week of class. Yes. Uh, because it takes us anywhere from sometimes two up to two weeks um, yes. to find a tutor. Um, and that way we can just get them as quick as possible. Sometimes students will put in a tutor request um, like two or three weeks until the end of the semester. And it's too late. We cannot, we can't save yeah. grades at that point. Um, and so they really need to be proactive. I always tell our students the first time you have that, oh, moment and you get back that first test and quiz and you really felt like you did really great. And then you get it back and you realize like, man, like, I don't know what went wrong. That's when you need to submit a request yeah. um, because it's something's you're something's not clicking. And so it could be working with in the supplemental instruction um, uh, instructors that Jennifer was talking about. They work hand in hand with our faculty. And so they're working with them and they're giving them just additional information, um, a supplemental course almost. And it could be once or twice a week. And they don't have to go to every single one. They can go in and say, hey, am I on the right track? And mm -hmm. they're going to look at the information and be like, yeah, you are. That confirmation increases academic confidence. Mm -hmm. And once their academic confidence is increased, that gives them the courage just to keep going. And if not, then they're going to say, this is where you're, you're missing the loop. This is right here is where you're missing the beat. Mm -hmm. And they're going to show them up until this point, you're great, but this part right here, they're going to show them how to fix it. And then that's going to help them be like, oh, that's why, because if we're missing something in chapter one still, and we're in chapter five, we're not going to get chapter five right, because we need to get chapter one down solid. Um, and so they're great at being able just to review, and they're not going to do the homework for them, but they will help them um, figure it out. Um smart pens so on that one um as far as the smart pen goes they're available to students who are registered with our office um and they have to have a like that's where the barrier is um so not all of our students use them because not all of them need it um some of our students we have to find actual note takers for because they have dexterity issues um, or they can't write for themselves, things like that. Uh, so that's one of those things where if your student just has to have documentation, it doesn't have to directly say student cannot take notes. That's, that's not what we're doing. We're going to meet with your student and then figure out what we need to do on that one. And then, um, Alicia, there was one more that came in. Oh, there it is. About um, working with Trio and it took over a month to get a tutor and, and things like that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, again, I would say the moment your student knows that they need, you know, I have severe math anxiety. Anybody knows that I just, me and math are not friends. And so um, anyone who has like anxiety of a subject, they should go ahead and put in the request for a tutor ASAP. Um, I would say, you know, the week before classes starts would be great um, for students. If you have a student, uh, if your student, Susan, is going to be in a class that, you know, are this is going to be a tough one for them. Go ahead and put that request in for fall. Mm -hmm. um, they can do that through their MyWSU portal. And when they log in on the um, My Classes tab, go down to the middle. Um, and there's a, a little link there that says request a tutor. Um, or they can go to wichita.edu backslash tutoring. Um, that, again, is wichita.edu backslash tutoring. And they can request um, a tutor from the homepage. 
Um, and that way they just have somebody on standby for when they need it. And that just to note, side note there, Alicia, um, if a student is getting to that point too, where they get that first test back and I've seen this too many times where students are like, I got this. I don't need accommodations anymore. I can handle this on my own. Um, that's okay. And that's great. But at some point in time, they may need it. And so that's a good time to say, hey, I know you want to try this on your own, but let's go ahead and get accommodations set up in case you need them. Um, and then that kind of goes back to with the um, if one thing's not working, let's try to find another avenue. So if they're going to trio and if they haven't signed up with us yet, they need to do that. If they are already signed up with us and they're working with one of our intake specialists or myself, let that person know, Hey, I've been trying to get a tutor through trio for over a month now and I still can't get one. Okay. Let's, let's figure this out. I mean, we've even worked with our own students as tutors for other people because they're a junior or a senior in that degree. And we're like, Hey, would you like to be a tutor? please go sign up over at the tutoring center so that we can get you signed up for this. So you can be this person's tutor because that's, so we work with everybody. So there's, and the other great thing is, is that all of our staff have different backgrounds. Mine, mine, like I said before, is in education, history and math, really ran convo, but that's what it's in. Um, one of our other intake specialists, her background is in social work and psychology. We have another one. I mean, we have a ton of people that have a lot of different backgrounds. So it never hurts to just ask. That's the other the, kind of the thing I'd like to really leave on that one with is it. It only hurts when you don't ask for help. That's the only time. And so if you as a parent can say, hey, remember when we were at orientation and they gave that thing, they were talking about that, okay? Even if it's financial aid or the registrar or needing to go talk to some, hey, remember we did this? Oh yeah, that's right. Because if you went to orientation, you got a whole lot of information in a very short amount of time. So tell them to ask. And I would rather your student who's not registered with me come to my office and say, I don't know where to go and me tell you exactly where to go than doing the runaround. Absolutely. I think it makes all the difference in the world just knowing that they have people on campus um, like Jennifer um, and the rest of the ODS staff knowing that they're advocating and really there to support them throughout their you know entire collegiate career. Um, and we'll find that some students, they come and they need a little nudge and encouragement and accommodations, and then they want to cut the cord. And that's great because that's what we ultimately want. Um, but for students who may need a little extra love and support, then they're here on standby um, every step of the way. And so, um, again, it's all about making sure that your students um, are are meeting us halfway um, to make sure that we can get them the support that they need. Um, yep, Paul, you found the pins on Amazon, 135-ish sounds, yep. right? Um, and they do, they do need a special notebook that goes with, that's why we usually say it's about 200 bucks because you get the pin, the notebook, right, and then like the charging cord that goes with it and all the stuff. So it's usually around 200 bucks. And honestly, the ones that have graduated that have bought them, it's, most of them are like, this is the best thing I've, I've found. And that, I think that's the best thing is like when we're meeting with students and they're introduced to technology that they were not, that they didn't have access to in high school or maybe even their community college um, or wherever they're transferring from. It's just knowing that there's other assistive technology out there to help them be successful. Um, we actually, this summer, because the pins have been so popular in the office, um, this is one of the offices that reports to me. And so their director, Isabel, had said, we need more pins. Yeah. And I was like, okay, we got them. We, and we got them. And so and you're they're set up and they're ready to go. So... <laughs> Um, and so it's it's great just to know that, you know, students are are appreciative of them. They're using it. But even knowing that they're learning how to use it 
beyond the classroom. And I mm -hmm. think that's what it's all about is how do we help them be successful, not only at Wichita State, but be as a lifelong learner in their careers as they're working with, you know, we worked with a student not too long ago um, who was um, entering their um, internship and how they can use different assistive technology in their internship to be successful. And it was things that they never thought about. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, whenever in doubt, just give our Office of Disability Services a call. Um, they are on standby. If you can't get a hold of them, you know, everyone has my information. Um, feel free to contact us at any given time um, because that's what we're here for. As we are wrapping up, um, if there's any other questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. Um, and we'll get to those, but I would like to announce our winner for this Shocker Family Table Talk. Um, and so today's winner is Kelly Stewart. Yay! Kelly Stewart. Um, and so Kelly, you are today's winner. Um, and so we will um, be mailing you out um, your Shocker um, swag. And so be on the lookout in your mailbox for that. Um, other than that, any last parting advice, words that you would like to share with our families, parents and family, Jen? Just, just contact us. That's the, the bottom line. Our turnaround time, if you email us, is usually about 24 to 48 hours. Um, unless you email me at 5 o'clock on a Friday. That's a whole nother ball game. Don't but <laughs> but any other time, um, that email is all of our staff have access to it and we um get back to people really really quickly um so if you guys need anything please just let us know even if a parent if you're a parent and have a question about something and your student doesn't want to ask email us it can't hurt yeah we we kind of get that a lot where the parents are like i really want my students to use accommodations they can't do without it um bring them in for a conversation because i think sometimes even hearing it from someone else and how it looks like at a university level can make all the difference in the world uh, because it may be that they don't want others to know they don't want their peers to know yeah. they don't want instructors to you know treat them any differently in class and so just talking about what the process looks like on our end um, mm -hmm. can help ease a lot of that anxiety um, at the at the very beginning. And so when in doubt, just pick up the phone call. Um, I really hope that you all enjoyed this um, table talk. Um, I specifically scheduled this one just only with disability services because we typically have a lot of really great um, questions and great conversation like we did today. Um, and so continue to join us. Um, we have a couple more scheduled this month. Um, and I know, I think next week we're talking about um, your shocker finances. And so a lot of, a lot of parents are like, when can I expect the bill? And um, that is something that will, um, uh oh, um, that is something that, um, oh, she put it up there. I'm sorry. Um, that's something that we will um, be able to talk through and walk you through what the student FIBA looks like online um, and how you can see um, your student's bill as well as how to set up payment plans and kind of look at what those options are online. And so make sure you join us for that. We will also be doing um, a drawing for a book scholarship for that one. Um, and so that is, uh, I think it's like a, a, a small scholarship, but nonetheless, um, every little bit helps. Um, can the counselor email a recommendation for the student or does it need to be paper mail and letter? You can definitely email that to us. And if you email it to the disability services, please make sure um, that the doctor, if they're going to send it, they can also fax it. Um, I didn't have that one up there, but our fax number is, I'm going to, I'm going to rattle this off for you. It's going to cheat. 316-978-3114. So 978-3114. Um, some doctor's office prefer to, to fax it and that's fine, but please, please, please ask your doctor to make sure they put your student's name on it. 
Um, sometimes we get those emailed over to us and we're like, who does this go to? <laughs> um, so they can definitely, they can send it right to that disability.services email or they can fax it to us. Um, if they can't do either one of them, they can bring it in. Yeah. Perfect. All right. So um, another question, Shannon. Absolutely. Um, this is actually, this table talk will be saved on the Student Affairs YouTube channel. And so you can go back and watch us as many times as you like. Um, or check out some of our other broadcasts that we had um, from earlier this summer. Um, but without any other questions, we're going to wrap it up and say thank you so much for joining us in Shocker Nation. We look forward to um, connecting with you next week and wish you all a wonderful summer and can't wait to see your students back on campus this fall. Have a good day.